two words really describe your new Jeep Liberty. Serious Gusto. It's ready to show you what's so great about the great outdoors. This video is designed to help you quickly get to know some of the key features and capabilities your new Jeep Liberty is equipped with. This video is not intended to take the place of your owner's manual, so please refer to the instruction manuals on the owner's information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If you're ready for some fun, so is your new Jeep Liberty. Let's get to know yours a little better. Your vehicle may be equipped with our remote keyless entry system. This system allows you to lock or unlock the doors and activate the panic alarm from distances up to approximately 66 feet or 20 meters right from the key fob. To unlock the doors, press and release the unlock button on the transmitter once to unlock only the driver's door or twice to unlock all the doors. When the unlock button is pressed, the illuminated entry will initiate and the parking lights will flash twice. To lock the doors, Press and release the lock button on the transmitter to lock all doors. Now your key fob may also be equipped with remote start, so you can start your vehicle from up to 300 feet or 91 meters away. In order to remote start your vehicle, the hood and all the doors must be closed. To remote start your vehicle, press the remote start button on the transmitter twice within five seconds. Once the vehicle has started, the engine will run for 15 minutes. To cancel remote start, Press the button a third time. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with our innovative automatic temperature control system, you can automatically maintain the climate in the cabin of the vehicle at the comfort level set by the driver and passenger. The system automatically adjusts airflow temperature, airflow distribution, airflow volume, and the amount of outside air recirculation. This maintains a comfortable temperature even under changing conditions. Operation of the system is quite simple. Just turn the blower control and the mode control to the auto position. Then, Dial in the temperature you'd like the system to maintain by rotating the temperature control. Once the comfort level is selected, the system will maintain that level automatically using the heating and air conditioning systems. You will experience the greatest efficiency by simply allowing the system to function automatically. The system can be controlled manually by rotating the controls out of auto mode. Selecting the O or OFF position on the blower control stops the system completely and closes the outside air intake. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. The air conditioning and heating system is designed to make you comfortable in all types of weather. The manual temperature controls consist of a series of outer rotary dials and inner push buttons. The blower control regulates the amount of air delivered through the ventilation system in any mode. There are multiple blower speeds. The blower speed increases as you rotate the control to the right from the O or OFF position. The temperature control is used to regulate the temperature of the air delivered to the passenger compartment. Rotating the dial left into the blue area of the scale indicates cooler temperatures, while rotating right into the red area indicates warmer temperatures. Use the mode control to choose from several patterns of air distribution. You can select either a primary mode as identified by the symbols on the control or a blend of two of these modes. Push the air conditioning control to engage the air conditioning. Pushing the recirculation control blocks outside air from entering the cabin. This can maximize air conditioning performance and block outside odors and dust. Push the rear window defrost control to engage the rear window defrost. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information.
If your vehicle is equipped with heated front seats, you'll really appreciate this feature on those cold mornings. The switches for the heated seats are located in the center console. Press the switch once to choose high. Two lights will confirm the setting. Press it a second time to choose low. You'll see one light. Pressing it a third time turns the heater off. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. The tilt steering column in your vehicle makes it easy to get comfortable behind the wheel. To tilt the steering column, push down on the lever below the multifunction lever. With one hand firmly on the wheel, move the steering column up or down as desired. Push the lever back up to lock the column firmly in place. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. To operate your vehicle's exterior lighting, turn the end of the multifunction lever to the first detent for parking light operation. Continue turning to the second detent for headlight operation. Turning the end of the multifunction lever to the third detent, the auto position, will activate the automatic headlight system. With the engine running and the multifunction lever in the auto position, the headlights will turn on and turn off automatically based on the surrounding light levels. To switch the headlights to high beam, Push the multifunction lever away from you. Pull the lever back toward you to switch the headlights back to low beam. And here's a handy feature. With flash to pass, you can signal another vehicle with your headlights by lightly pulling the multifunction lever toward you. This will cause the headlights to turn on at high beam and remain on until the lever is released. If your vehicle is equipped with fog lights, that switch is also on the multifunction lever. To activate the front fog lights, Turn on the parking lights or the low beam headlights and pull out the end of the multifunction lever. You can also change the brightness of the instrument panel lights by rotating the center portion of the multifunction lever up or down. Rotate the center portion upward to the next detent position to brighten the odometer and radio controls when the parking lights or headlights are on. Rotate the center portion upward to the last detent to turn on the interior lighting. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. The windshield wiper and washer controls are located on the right side of the steering column. Turn the end of the handle to select the desired wiper speed. You can use the intermittent wiper selection when weather conditions call for a single wiping cycle with a delay in between. Select the delay interval by turning the end of the lever. Rotate the control upward or clockwise to decrease the delay time and downward or counterclockwise to increase the delay time. Rotate to the first detent for low speed operation, then rotate to the second detent for high speed. Push down on the lever to activate a single wipe to clear the windshield of road mist or spray from a passing vehicle. As long as the lever is held down, the wipers will continue to operate. To use the washer, pull the lever toward you and hold to activate the spray. If the lever is pulled while in the delay range, the wiper will operate on low speed for two wipe cycles after the lever is released and then resume the intermittent operation. If the lever is pulled while in the off position, the wipers will operate for two wipe cycles, then turn off. Your vehicle is equipped with a rear window wiper. Rotating the center part of the switch forward to the on position will activate the wiper. The rear wiper operates in an intermittent mode only. Rotating the center of the switch all the way forward will turn on the wash function. The wash pump will continue to operate as long as the switch is held. When you release the switch, the wipers will cycle two more times before returning to the set position. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. The power mirror switch is located on the driver's door trim. Use the control buttons to select the left mirror or right mirror. 
After selecting a mirror, move the control in the same direction you want the mirror to move. If your vehicle is equipped with heated power mirrors, these mirrors are heated to melt frost or ice. This feature is activated whenever you turn on the rear window defroster. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your Electronic Vehicle Information Center, or EVIC, features a driver interactive display that is located in the instrument cluster. This system conveniently allows you to view a variety of useful information by pressing the buttons mounted on the steering wheel. You can get information about system status, vehicle information warning message displays, outside temperature and compass, audio mode display, and much, much more. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your vehicle is equipped with a Tire Pressure Monitoring System, or TPMS. It measures pressure in your four road tires and sends the tire pressure readings to your vehicle. The tire pressure monitoring light located in the instrument cluster will turn on and an audible chime will sound if the pressure is low in one or more of your tires. Once the light is illuminated, one or more of your tires are underinflated and need to be inflated to the manufacturer's recommended tire pressure. You can find that information on the placard located on the inside edge of the driver's side door. Now, even if the light turns on for a short time and then turns off, your tire pressure still needs to be checked. Remember, tire pressures change with air temperature change. Keep this in mind when checking tire pressure inside a garage, especially in the winter. Tire pressure may increase from heat during operation. Do not reduce this normal pressure buildup or your tire pressure will be too low. Here's an important note though. Do not try to use the TPMS warning light as a tire pressure gauge as it does not automatically turn off when the proper pressure is returned to the tire. When the tire is properly inflated, you may have to drive for a bit before the system resets itself and turns the warning light off. The warnings may stay on, however, until all tires have been properly inflated. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information. Here's hoping you'll never have to, but just in case, let's talk about changing a flat tire. The scissor type jack and tire changing tools are located in the cargo compartment behind a trim cover on the left rear trim panel. The spare tire is stowed underneath the rear of the vehicle and is held in place by a cable winch mechanism. Fit the jack handle extension over the drive nut located in the rear cargo area inside the vehicle. Use the lug wrench to rotate the nut counterclockwise until the spare is on the ground with enough slack in the cable to allow you to pull the tire out from under the vehicle. When the spare is clear, tilt the retainer at the end of the cable and pull it through the center of the wheel. Now loosen, but do not remove the wheel lug nuts by turning them to the left one turn while the wheel is still on the ground. Make sure you're parked on a firm, level surface. Avoid ice or slippery areas. Also, make sure the ignition is off, the hazard lights are on, and the parking brake is fully set. Blocking both the front and rear of the wheel diagonally opposite of the jacking position is also a good idea. If changing the right front tire, block the left rear tire. You'll need to assemble the jack and jacking tools by connecting the jack handle driver to the extension, then to the lug wrench. For the front tires, Place the jack just to the rear of the notch on the body weld seam behind the wheel to be changed. For the rear tires, place it under the axle by the wheel to be changed. Do not raise the vehicle until you are sure the jack is fully engaged. Now you're ready to raise the vehicle by turning the jack screw to the right. Raise the vehicle only until the tire just clears the surface and enough clearance is obtained to install the spare tire. Remember, Minimum tire lift provides maximum stability. Okay, 
Now go ahead and remove the lug nuts and wheel. Position the spare tire on the vehicle and reinstall the lug nuts with the cone-shaped end toward the wheel. Lightly tighten the lug nuts clockwise. Now you can lower the vehicle by turning the jack screw to the left and remove the jack. Once on the ground, you can finish tightening the lug nuts. Alternate lug nuts until each lug nut has been tightened twice. Maximum effort should be used for final tightening of the lug nuts. It's always a good idea to have the tightness checked with a torque wrench by your authorized dealer or at a service station. Now, just secure the tire, jack, and tools in their proper locations, and you're ready to go. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your vehicle is equipped with an engine oil change indicator system. The change oil message will flash in the instrument cluster odometer for approximately 12 seconds after a single chime has sounded to indicate the next scheduled oil change interval. Or the oil change required message will flash in the electronic vehicle information center display for approximately 5 seconds after a single chime has sounded. The engine oil change indicator system is duty cycle based which means the engine oil change interval may fluctuate dependent upon your personal driving style. Here's a quick note though. Unless reset, this message will continue to display each time you turn the ignition switch to the on position. To reset the oil change indicator system after performing the scheduled maintenance, turn the ignition switch to the on position, but don't start the engine. Now fully depress the accelerator pedal slowly three times within 10 seconds, and turn the ignition switch back to the lock position. If the indicator message illuminates when you start the vehicle, the oil change indicator system did not reset and you will need to repeat this procedure. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If the vehicle diagnostic system detects a problem with the fuel filler cap, or the fuel filler cap is loose, improperly installed, or damaged, the word gas cap will display in the odometer, or the words check gas cap will appear in the electronic vehicle information center. If this occurs, tighten the fuel filler cap properly. If the problem continues, the message will appear the next time the vehicle is started. See your authorized service center as soon as possible. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with electronic speed control or cruise control, you're going to like this feature. Remember though, Cruise control is designed for use in continuous flowing highway traffic and when engaged, can take over accelerator operation at speeds over 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. The control is conveniently located right on the steering wheel for easy one-touch operation. To activate your cruise control, push the on-off button. To turn the system off, push the on-off button a second time. It's best to leave the system turned off when not in use. To set a desired speed, accelerate to the speed you want to maintain. Then simply press the set minus button and release. Take your foot off the accelerator and the vehicle will operate at the speed you have selected. You can deactivate the system by using a soft tap on the brake pedal, pushing the cancel button, or using normal brake pressure while slowing the vehicle. These actions will not erase your set speed memory. So to resume your previously selected speed, press the Res Plus or Resume button and release. When the cruise control system is on, your speed can be increased by pressing and holding the Res Plus button. Release the button when the new desired speed is reached and the new speed will be set. To decrease speed while the cruise control system is on, press and hold the Set Minus button. Release the button when the new desired speed is reached and the new speed will be set. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD 
or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. You chose four-wheel drive for the ability to go exactly where you want to go, on road or off. So let's talk about how the system works. Your vehicle may be equipped with Select Track four-wheel drive. Your electronically shifted transfer case provides four mode positions. Two WD or two-wheel drive that provides rear-wheel drive in the high range for normal street and highway driving on dry, hard surface roads. Four WD Auto or four-wheel drive auto range gives you additional traction for loose, slippery road surfaces only. This position is always in four-wheel drive mode, and 4WD low or four-wheel drive low range gives you additional traction at maximum pulling power for loose, slippery road surfaces at low speeds. Do not exceed 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers per hour. N or neutral disengages both the front and rear drive shafts from the powertrain. It's to be used for flat towing behind another vehicle. The transfer case must be shifted into neutral for recreational towing. Shifts into and out of neutral can take place with the selector switch in any mode position. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the owner's information DVD for complete details on shifting into neutral. To shift from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive, move the four-wheel drive control switch to the desired position. Shifts between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive auto can be done with the vehicle stopped or in motion. With the vehicle in motion, the transfer case will engage or disengage faster if you momentarily let up on the accelerator pedal after completing the shift. If the vehicle is stopped, the ignition key must be in the on position with the engine either running or off. This shift cannot be completed if the key is in the ACC or accessories position. A quick note though, the four-wheel drive system will not allow shifts between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive auto if the front and or rear wheels are spinning. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the owner's information DVD for complete details and other important safety information. Shifting into four-wheel drive low can be done with the vehicle moving slowly or stopped. To shift into four-wheel drive low while moving, with the engine running, slow the vehicle to two to three miles per hour or three to five kilometers per hour. Shift the transmission into neutral, and while still rolling, move the transfer case control switch to four-wheel drive low. Or, you can bring the vehicle to a complete stop and with the key on and the engine either off or running, shift the transmission into neutral. Go ahead now and move the transfer case control switch to 4WD low. After the position indicator light is on and not flashing, shift the transmission back into gear. Sometimes, when shifting into or out of four-wheel drive low, some gear noise may be heard. This noise is normal and not detrimental to the vehicle or occupants. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the owner's information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. ParkSense is technology that really makes sense. The rear park assist system is active when you shift the transmission into the reverse position and the vehicle speed is less than 10 miles per hour or 16 kilometers per hour. The system can be turned on or off through the electronic vehicle information center when the vehicle is in park. The system uses four sensors located in the rear bumper to scan for obstacles up to 79 inches or 200 centimeters away from the rear bumper. The rear park assist warning display is located in the instrument cluster's EVIC display. The system will indicate a detected obstacle by showing three solid arcs and will produce a half-second tone. As the vehicle moves closer to the object, the EVIC display will show fewer arcs and the sound tone will change from slow to fast to continuous. To keep the system working properly, make sure that the rear bumper is free of dirt, snow, ice, and debris. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the owner's information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. Your vehicle may be equipped with the convenience of our HomeLink system. HomeLink replaces up to three remote controls or handheld transmitters that operate devices such as garage door openers, motorized gates, lighting, or home security systems. 
The Home Link control buttons are located in the overhead console. If you haven't programmed any of the Home Link buttons yet, be sure to erase all channels before you begin. To do this, press and hold the two outside buttons for up to 20 seconds until the red indicator flashes. For more efficient training and accurate transmission of the radio frequency signal, it is recommended that a new battery be placed in the handheld transmitter of the device being programmed to Homelink. The Homelink unit is powered by your vehicle's battery and does not require battery replacement. When programming the Homelink system, your vehicle should be parked outside of the garage. If your garage door opener was manufactured after 1995, it may have a rolling code. These garage door openers can be identified by the Learn or Train button located where the hanging antenna is attached to the garage door opener. So let's take a minute and talk about how to program a rolling code. To start, put the ignition in the on run position, but don't start the engine. Place the handheld transmitter 1 to 3 inches or 3 to 8 centimeters away from the home link button you wish to program while keeping the home link indicator light in view. Now, Simultaneously press and hold both the home link button you want to program and the handheld transmitter button. Continue to hold both buttons and observe the indicator light. The home link indicator will flash slowly and then rapidly after home link has received the frequency signal from the handheld transmitter. Release both buttons after the indicator light changes from slow to rapid blinking. Okay, now you're ready for the next steps. At the garage door opener motor in the garage, locate the Learn or Training button. It can usually be found where the hanging antenna wire is attached to the garage door opener motor. The name and color of the button may vary by manufacturer. It is not the button normally used to open and close the door. You will have 30 seconds in which to initiate the next step after the Learn button has been pressed, so this might work better as a two-person job. Now, firmly press and release the Learn or Training button, return to the vehicle, or have someone in the vehicle to press the programmed Home Link button twice, holding the button for two seconds each time. If the opener is plugged in and activates, programming is complete. If the device does not activate, press the button a third time for two seconds to complete the training. A quick note though, if your garage door opener was manufactured before 1995, it may have a non-rolling code, so let's take you through programming a non-rolling code. Put the ignition in the on-run position, but don't start the engine, and hold the battery side of your handheld transmitter away from the home link button you wish to program. Place the handheld transmitter 1 to 3 inches or 3 to 8 centimeters away from the home link button while keeping the indicator light in view. Now. Simultaneously press and hold both the chosen home link button and the handheld transmitter button until the home link indicator changes from a slow to a rapidly blinking light, then release both the home link and the handheld transmitter buttons. When the indicator changes, it is programmed. It may take up to 30 seconds or longer in rare cases. The garage door may open and close during programming. To check your programming, press and hold the just programmed home link button and observe the indicator light. If the indicator light stays on constantly, then programming is complete and the garage door or device should activate when the home link button is pressed. On vehicles equipped with a security alarm, home link will be disabled if the alarm is active. If you have any problems or require assistance, please call toll free 1-800-355-3515 or on the internet at homelink.com for information or assistance. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com slash owners for complete details and other important safety information. If your vehicle is equipped with steering wheel audio controls, you can manage your audio system without ever having to take your hands off the steering wheel. The steering wheel audio controls are located on the rear surface of the steering wheel. The left and right controls are rocker type switches with a push button in the center of each switch. On the right hand switch, press the top of the switch to increase the volume. Press the bottom of the switch to decrease the volume. Press the button in the center of the switch to change modes AM, FM, etc. While you're in radio mode, 
press the top of the left-hand side switch to seek the next listenable station up from the current setting. Press the bottom of that switch to seek the next listenable station down from the current setting. Press the button in the center of the left-hand side switch to tune to the next preset that you have programmed. Now, if you're in media mode, press the top of the left-hand side switch once to listen to the next track. Press the bottom of that switch once, either to listen to the beginning of the current track or to listen to the beginning of the previous track if it's within one second after the current track begins to play. Press the switch up or down twice to listen to the second track, three times to listen to the third track, and so forth. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information. Uconnect Phone is our exclusive voice-activated hands-free in-vehicle communication system. Uconnect Phone allows you to talk on your Bluetooth hands-free wireless profile phone while keeping your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Once connected, your cellular phone is fully integrated with your vehicle's audio system. The volume of your Uconnect phone can be adjusted either from the radio volume control knob or from the steering wheel radio control if equipped. To begin using Uconnect, first, you'll have to connect or pair your Bluetooth phone. So let's get started. Press the Uconnect phone button to begin. Ready. Available options are call, dial, phone book, redial. Just follow the audible prompts. Setup. Do you want to pair a device, delete a device, or list paired devices? Pair a device. The system will take you right through each step. You will be asked to say a four-digit personal identification number or PIN, which you will later need to enter into your cellular phone. Please say a four-digit PIN number. One, two, three, four. PIN code one, two, three, four. Is this correct? Yes. You can enter any four-digit PIN. You will not need to remember this PIN after the initial pairing process. For identification purposes, you will then be prompted to give the Uconnect phone a name for your cellular phone. Please say the name of the device after the beep. Paul's phone. Adding. Paul's phone. Is this correct? Yes. Each cellular phone that is paired should be given a unique phone name. You will then be asked to give your cellular phone a priority level between 1 and 7, with 1 being the highest priority. You can pair up to seven cellular phones to your Uconnect phone. However, at any given time, only one cellular phone can be in use. Assign a priority level between one and seven. One is the highest priority. One. Paul's phone. Set to priority one. Is this correct? Yes. Start pairing procedure on device. See device manual for instructions. At the prompt, Enter the four-digit PIN that you created earlier to your phone to begin pairing. Pairing complete. So now you're ready to make and receive calls. To make a call to a specific phone number, press the Uconnect phone button to begin. Ready. After the ready prompt and the following beep, say dial. The system will then prompt you to say the number you want to dial. Uconnect phone will confirm the phone number and then dial. Uconnect will also let you create a phone book. And once created, you can make a call by just saying a name. How's that for convenience? Refer to the Uconnect instructions on the Owner's Information DVD for complete details on creating your personal phone book. To make a call by name, press the Uconnect phone button to begin. After the ready prompt and the following beep, say, Call. The system will then prompt you to say the name of the person you want to call. For example, you can say John Doe if John Doe is a previously stored name entry in the Uconnect phone book or downloaded phone book. The Uconnect system will confirm the name and then dial the corresponding phone number. To receive an incoming call, just press the Uconnect phone button. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information.
With Uconnect Phone, you can consider yourself well connected. Uconnect Phone is our exclusive voice-activated hands-free in-vehicle communication system. Uconnect Phone allows you to talk on your Bluetooth hands-free wireless profile phone while keeping your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. Once connected, your cellular phone is fully integrated with your vehicle's audio system. The volume of your Uconnect Phone can be adjusted either from the radio volume control knob or from the steering wheel radio control if equipped. To begin using Uconnect, first, you'll have to connect or pair your Bluetooth phone. So, let's get started. Press the Uconnect phone button to begin. Uconnect phone. Available options are call, dial, phone book, redial. Just follow the audible prompts. Uconnect phone setup. Select one of the following phone pairing, confirmation prompts. Phone pairing. Select one of the following, pair a phone, delete a phone, or list paired phones. Pair a phone. The system will take you right through each step. You will be asked to say a four-digit personal identification number or PIN, which you will later need to enter into your cellular phone. Please say a four-digit PIN number. One, two, three, four. PIN code one, two, three, four. Is this correct? Yes. You can enter any four-digit PIN. You will not need to remember this PIN after the initial pairing process. For identification purposes, you will then be prompted to give the Uconnect phone a name for your cellular phone. Please say the name of the phone after the beep. Paul's phone. Each cellular phone that is paired should be given a unique phone name. You will then be asked to give your cellular phone a priority level between 1 and 7 with one being the highest priority. You can pair up to seven cellular phones to your Uconnect phone. However, at any given time, only one cellular phone can be in use. Assign a priority level between one and seven. One is the highest priority. One. Paul's phone. Is set to priority one. Is this correct? Yes. Pairing complete. So, now you're ready to make and receive calls. To make a call to a specific phone number, press the Uconnect phone button to begin. After the ready prompt and the following beep, say dial. The system will then prompt you to say the number you want to dial. Uconnect phone will confirm the phone number and then dial. Uconnect will also let you create a phone book. And once created, you can make a call by just saying a name. How's that for convenience? Refer to the Uconnect instructions on the Owner's Information DVD for complete details on creating your personal phone book. Press the Uconnect phone button to begin. After the ready prompt and the following beep, say, Call. The system will then prompt you to say the name of the person you want to call. For example, you can say John Doe if John Doe is a previously stored name entry in the Uconnect phone book or downloaded phone book. The Uconnect system will confirm the name and then dial the corresponding phone number. To receive an incoming call, just press the Uconnect phone button. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information. With Uconnect phone, you can consider yourself well connected. If your vehicle is equipped with our state-of-the-art Uconnect voice command system, you can control your AM-FM radio, satellite radio, CD-DVD player, mobile phone, supported portable media devices, and you can also record memos with the sound of your voice. The Uconnect voice command system also provides limited capability to select and play music by artist, song, album, music, genre, or playlist from your compatible iPod device if equipped. When you press the voice command button located on the radio faceplate or steering wheel, you will hear a beep. The beep is your signal to give a command. 
If you do not say a command within a few seconds, the system will present you with a list of options. Available options are track 1 to 250, next track, previous track, or main menu. To start a dialogue with the system, press the voice command button, then say a command. Please refer to the voice command instructions on the owner's information DVD for a complete list of appropriate voice commands and further details. Use the radio on-off volume rotary knob to adjust the volume to a comfortable level while the Uconnect voice command system is speaking. If you'd like to access the tutorial, press the voice command button. After the beep, say tutorial. Press any hard key or touch the display to cancel the tutorial. Please refer to the instruction manuals on the Owner's Information DVD or jeep.com owners for complete details and other important safety information.